So you needed this pressure here, which is perpendicular to that surface that's floating at the water level, uh -huh. right? But it's acting all the way around it, everywhere on that bottom surface. Right, okay. Yeah. So you got to get pressure. And that was specific weight times Z, and Z is 0.75. So then you needed to use a specific, like if you use 70, So I'll say Great Salt Lake equals 70 pounds per foot cubed. All right, specific weight. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to confirm that I did the lab the, the one last week, the Boise lab, correctly. It was it was floating on top, right? Not, not a static position underneath the water. For this For thing? Little, like, yeah, yeah. So I don't think I fully set. I just said, does it float enough lower? I just did it. It floated on top. Like, okay. Yeah. That's good. That's... We'll get to that. We'll but, do that next. We're not. We're finishing that one today. We're right? finishing that one today. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh. It's similar to this, right? Very yeah. similar. Yeah. All right. So now what do we do? We need our Z in feet. Yeah. Right? Which is depth. Because yeah. That's our depth. So what is our C in feet? 0.75 12 divided by 0.0625. So we have 70. Yep. 0.0625 feet. And we get 4.3. Seven five cross cross pounds per feet squared, and then we find the yeah. area of the yeah. Now we need to know the hydrostatic force, that's just the hydrostatic pressure, okay? Right? Yeah, we need the hydrostatic force, which is just force. So our area is eight foot, four foot. Right? Yeah. So we take our pressure to get force, hydrostatic force, we take our pressure times the area. 4.375 pounds per foot cubed. Four times eight is. Okay, I'll do it. 32. Yes. Yeah. So we have a hydrostatic force of 128.0 pounds. That's great. That gives me hydrostatic force, but what else do I need to know to know if this thing floats or not? The weight of the dang thing. Yeah, so you needed to Google like three quarter inch piece of plywood. Guarantee it doesn't weigh 128 pounds because I can actually carry a 30 or four by eight sheet. Not very easily. It's heavy. Anyway, look it up. What a way. I think they're like 40. Three quarter inch plywood equals 1.91 or 1.9 pounds per square foot. So 1.9, basically two. Times yeah. 30, 32, right? 32 yeah. square feet. So it's like 60 pounds. What if you convert it to inches? You got a slightly different number. You can run it in inches. You just had to have this number in inches. Yeah. Yeah. Then you could have run the whole thing in inches. Absolutely. That works. Should work just fine. That was the quiz, in case you're wondering what we're doing. The Friday quiz, which is very much like your current lab that you're doing, later, which is a little similar to the next lab that you're going to do. So the quiz was the submission thing, so you don't have anything to turn in there. Did you, you didn't have any homework. You were just working on this, right? Yeah. Right. On this creature, 
Let's talk about it before we test it. So how thick was it? Was it eighth inch? Yeah. And we're using water, right? Yeah. And so what'd you use for the density or the specific weight of water? Six feet to point four seven. Perfect. And that is pounds per foot cubed. cubed. Yeah. All right, what do we get for an area? We need the area of this thing, right? Five point nine seven three three. That's what I got. Five point nine seven three three inches squared. Definitely not feet squared. Inches squared. Yeah. Okay. So then we had to decide how we're floating it. So I'm guessing most of us floated it flat. Correct. Yeah. 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 I'm going to draw it a little thicker. So I didn't tell you which way to float. I just said, will it float? So you put it in a position and then determined, will it float or not float, right? What did we get for the weight of this thing? How much? Point five ounces. How many pounds is that? Point zero three one five. Okay. Because our specific weight has pounds in it, so we're probably going to need to have pounds as the object. All right, so what do we do first? We need to calculate the pressure. This thing's going to float, kind of like the quiz, it's going to float right, right on the surface. That means we don't have any hydrostatic force going down. We have gravity going down. So I'll just call it P1. And that's going to be the depth, most of the time in feet, because we're going to multiply it by the specific weight. You could switch it all to inches. That works, too. But 0.125, 12 divide is 0 0.014, no, 0 0.0104, 0 0.0104, and I'm going to go one more two feet. So that's Z. Then I need the specific weight, 62.47 pounds per feet cubed. Yeah? That gives us pressure in PSF, pounds per square foot. Anybody have that number? I get 0 0.6507 pounds per foot square. That is the pressure. What we need is hydrostatic force. That's called the buoyant force. That's what's pushing up on an object. So this pressure acts everywhere on that bottom surface. If you have that bottom surface flat, it's acting perfectly against gravity, right? Agreed, gravity acts downward. What if you put the object in like this? How does the pressure act against the object? Perpendicular like this. And now is that hydrostatic force acting against gravity? Gravity comes straight down. The hydrostatic force would be at an angle. So, so part, part of the hydrostatic force would be acting, but not all of it. So as you rotate that surface, the hydrostatic force is doing less and less and less. Just kind of get that? Envision it. And then as it goes like, here to here, what is the hydrostatic force acting on that's helping us be buoyant? This little edge right here. So it does the position of an object matter? Absolutely matters for sure. So if you're placing it in like this, nice and level, that's this analysis. 
if you just like throwing it in, right, or putting it in on edge, then this is the surface that's actually trying to float it. Okay. All right. So what's our hydrostatic force? That's going to be equal to the pressure times the area. Our pressure is 0. 0.6507. Pounds per foot squared. And our area is, well, it's 5.9733 inches squared. But I have feet squared, so I need feet squared. How do I get to feet squared? There's 144 inches squared and a foot squared, right? So the inches squared have to go on the bottom. I got to divide. Looks like 0 0.0415 feet squared. Giving me a hydrostatic force of, I have the two numbers stored. It's like, 0 0.027 pounds. 0 0.027 pounds. And how much does this thing weigh? 0 0.03. Yeah. So 0 0.03, 0 0.027. This could round to 0 0.03. Point zero three. This is really close. So I got the same answer, but I didn't know um, putting the piece of plastic on the corner. And yeah, you'll get the same answer. Depth doesn't matter because it's, it goes deeper. You get more hydrostatic force in the bottom, but now you got to calculate the hydrostatic force at the top. I did that the so did you have it floating or not floating in the flat position? Good. It won't float. It won't float. I got the same. Yeah. Any, anyone get it floating? I put it in the middle. In the middle of what? Of the okay. water? The water. And you got it to float or just equal out? To float. You okay. got it to float by how much? What was your hydrostatic force? Like, well, let me see. <laughs> All right. You keep calculating one. I want to hear it because I got it like directly equal. Like when I calculated, I had hydro hydrostatic force e equaling the down like 30, 30 pounds. Or mm, there must be some calculation error there. I'll have to look at that. Yeah. If they were equal, would they if they were equal, is it going to float or not float? Is that neutrally buoyant? Where it'll stay wherever? Yeah. So if it's equal, and you set it on the surface, then everything's in equilibrium. Nothing's pushing it down. It should sit there. If you put it under the water and everything's equal, it should stay put in that elevation of the water. If you could hold it like this, yeah. like perfect. If it gets off at any angle whatsoever, anything off a of horizontal, this thing is sinking. So is that's our analysis. Now we, we need to test it. I have a bucket of water. And I have our thing. Did you have another question? I think oh, no, it's correct. good to get your questions answered because you're going to design a boat. And you, so you want to get this logic down. I think I'm having trouble thinking about it as a static force because when I think of something sinking, as it sinks, depth is changing, which means the force is yeah. getting greater. So but we are not thinking about something sinking. We're not thinking about motion. We're using our statics, okay. static analysis to do any kind of analysis. But I'm assuming that that is an aspect of fluid dynamics. Oh, this, like, yeah. it probably it's definitely has an aspect of, of buoyancy. Right. But when you design something to be buoyant or not buoyant, you don't think about it moving. You just want to know that there's enough buoyant force to hold it up. Okay. 
Is yeah. there like a strength of materials for food and chemicals? Dynamics. What? And then, no, strength of materials is strength of materials. So I know, but like that sort of class where statics is like the precursor to that. Um, not really. No. Like you're going to use your strengths to do all kinds of like fluid pressure analysis. Like if you want to design a tank to hold a fluid, oh. right? That's that's kind of a dynamic situation, but you're going to still use strengths to calculate that. So strengths of materials is tank. strength of materials. Yeah. So. There's higher levels of strengths than what you went through. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of boat are we designing exactly? Well, we'll get to the boat thing. We gotta test our, our fair and float thing. So somebody needs to come and put them in the water. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, everybody gets to experience it. Because I want you to put it in the water in two positions. I want you to try to put it in the water as flat as you can and as carefully as you can. And then I want you to put it in the water on edge. Are we, uh, we might need those paper cuts. Go ahead. Are we turning this slab in? Yep. The, the homework or the yeah, homework? it'll come in with the homework. We didn't have to do that. Nope. He's doing very fair. Probably a paper towel. Yeah. It does look like it's barely floating. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I it's, think it's, it's like maybe a called collegiate is why it's the paper clip on the Yeah. All right, pull it out, put it in on edge. Should be good. I hope that would be good. I don't think that will speak. You can put it in as low as you want. Surprise. Like a rock. Now the hydrostatic force is keeping it at the. Yeah, there's no buoyant force. Um, so try to put it in, and then anyone can do this, and you don't have to do whatever you want. So now try to put it in horizontal, like nice and flat, but under the wall. Then the BD. But it has to be see how it sank. So, yep. Well, like this. So as soon as you drop it in, it's not, its shape is not in balance. So what it's, it's, it's not due to geometric side or not flat shape, right? But so as soon as you let go of it, it does this. It's one size heavier than the other. And now the hydrostatic force is no longer straight with that. So as soon as it goes like this, then it just takes off. And then it just gets in the way. All right. Anybody else? Oh, no, down in the water. Yeah, that was good. That means so. that's all. All right. Nobody else wants to experience. I did. I just no, Thanks, Devin. Of course. For participating. Bro. When you participate, you learn better. Hey, huh? Is it too late? I didn't raise my hand, but you want to do it? it? Yeah, it's right there, isn't it? Yeah, go for it. You gotta set it in pretty flat. No. All right, I'll take your laps. Pass the end. Got All right, do whatever you gotta do. Is there a stapler around right here? Oh, yeah. Well, now you got pretty heavy. I don't know. There's probably something in there. Well, look at all that springboard. Well, I thought we were gonna like turn it in later. Oh, uh, it, I still won't put that. I still won't think. You have time to rewrite it. Sure. You can. We want to do it today. Well, we're gonna be in lab today. Oh, we're gonna this in lab. Yeah, yeah, I thought we were gonna have more time. I was gonna rewrite mine. All right, if you need to, it doesn't need to be a lab format. I don't think I said on this one. Did I don't say lab. Or, I still need to rewrite like mine. Oh, no. No. So if you need to rewrite it, rewrite it. You can do that today. But I want it today. No worries. I work on it and I use different formula than the one that you're using, but my answer is the same. Well, it couldn't have been much different of a formula. <laughs> I use the one that the... Uh... Specific weight times volume, that's... Oh, you use the buoyancy formula. 
Yeah. Was this lab two? So that's what like, we're going to use in the book. This is yeah. lab two. Okay, that, oh, it's conceptually. Sorry, it was twist. Okay, the answer right. is the same. Yeah. Uh, so what you can't three. use that for okay. is trying to determine um, at a depth of something that go up and down or. But it's it's just the same concept. All right. Yeah. And, and got, you know, I work with them. Uh, I didn't have time to put it on. Unless you want me to just leave it like that or transfer it. If it's homework format, I'll take it. Like, just fine. If you want to write it up better than the presentation I, I you have. I take it because every, everything that I did is here. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was going to do it, but I ran out of time. Uh, I've written like so. The other way I can copy it because the other side has notes on it from the last slide. Yeah, I didn't it. Not, you can rewrite it. I didn't know if you want to rewrite it or wait. Yeah. You? You want the notes? I don't yeah. care. I don't care that it has notes on your back. You don't? Sure. Anything you want from me? I was worried that you do with care. The word. But All right. No. No. This is lab three. This is float or no float. And then we'll talk about the next lab, the boat. All right, so you just figured out whether something can float or not by calculating the hydrostatic force, right? That would be any kind of object that's under the water you can do that by calculating the force on top, the force on the bottom. We are a good example of an object that goes into water. So if you don't know how to dive down to the bottom of a pool, you would not want to try that in this position. If you're laying nice and flat, you have the most surface area acting in the water. So you have a big hydrostatic force. So if you can swim along and then put yourself in this position, you have a much smaller surface area to dive to the bottom of the pool, right? So that's why folks that know how to get to the bottom of the pool will like, you know, bend themselves, kick their feet straight up and make themselves like an arrow heading to the bottom. That's the least amount of hydrostatic force. If you want to survive in the water and keep breathing, how do you do that? You float on your back and make your body the biggest surface area you can to get the most hydrostatic force. Boom. That's, you to spread out. that's why you want to spread out. Arms out, legs out, as much surface area as possible. Yeah, babies know this instinctively. You throw your baby in the water, I don't know I'll if I do. Around. Be careful doing this, right? Not yet. But <laughs> they will flip themselves over and float on their back. Like they instinctively know how to do it. It's very hard on parents. <laughs> yeah. So cool. All right. So objects underwater or objects above the water, it's easy. There's another way to calculate whether something will float or not. You just did hydrostatic force, which uses the specific weight of the fluid. You, you always got to use the specific weight of the fluid. So if you want to know if this thing will float, like if you're doing a float gauge in oil, diesel, gasoline, anything, and this float thing is going to go up and down, you need to know that that float's going to float inside of the tank. You want it to move up and down, right? Mm -hmm. Anytime you want to know if something floats or not, the simplest calculation, this doesn't identify details. It just identifies like, hey, I have this thing. If I you know, close it and throw it into the water, is that going to float or not? Good question. If this, so the, the thing that you're going to calculate is the volume of this. You always need the volume of whatever you're working with. And then the fluid that you're going to displace. So this has a volume, and when it goes in the water, it displaces or moves this amount of the fluid if it goes all the way in, right? What's this called? Something's this is buoyancy, just straight up buoyancy. Yeah, yeah. 
What is it? Oh, yeah. Uh, if it displaces more weight than it is, it floats. So if I jump in the water and I displace more than 170 pounds of fluid, I will float. Everyone understand what that means? Displacement means moving this amount of fluid somewhere else. Yeah. So I like super muscly people don't float. That is. Yep. It, it's your density, right? Um, no nice way to say this, but fat is less dense than muscle. So the more muscle you have, you're not going to float. You're going to go down like a rock. So when you have to do your boat design, what you have to do? You have to do two boats. You have to think about the first boat you're going to do is literally a box. Just a box. Very simple boat. The second boat you're going to do, you have to change the whole shape somehow. I'll let you decide how you want to change the whole shape. Okay. But to determine whether a box will float or not, you need the weight of the box and you need the geometry of the box, right? So if we have like a shoe box, we'll just say it's 12 inches by six inches by six inches, right? And we're gonna put a weight in it. Let's put a weight of 10 pounds in it. And you would want to include the weight of your box. So if this is like a cardboard box, maybe the weight of my cardboard box is one pound. Does that make sense? You need to know the total amount of weight that you're trying to hold up. And then you need to know how much volume it is because that's how much water it would displace. So it has to hold 10 pounds? I put 10 pounds in the box, like there's heavy shoes in there or something. That make, this, that's just the weight that went in the box. So that would be all the stuff that you had in your boat, right? Seats and instruments and people, right? All that would be the weight. And then this would be the weight of the boat, one pound, cardboard box. Although everybody with, not why you use everybody with me so far on what we're doing. And we're just going to determine if it floats or not floats. Okay, so I need the volume. 432 cubic inches. And that's 12 times 6 times 6. Yeah. How, how much? 432. 4, 3, 2, even? Yep. Yeah. And units? Cubic inches. Inches. Perfect. We're going to float it in water. So the specific weight of water, 62.47 pounds per foot cubed. So if this thing went all the way in the water, it would displace 432 inches cubed of water of that density. Correct? Okay. So are you going to still work? Which way do you want to go? Feet to inches, inches to feet. Inches. Inches to feet. Inches to feet. So we need this in feet. Let's get our volume Point in feet. Five. Huh? Point to five. Point two five feet cubed. Anybody confirm that? Somebody needs to confirm that. I trust Jorge, but. Yeah, that's great. All right, great. So that's how much volume we have. So then how much weight? So this I'm going to call weight of water displaced. Right? And that's going to be the volume times the specific weight. A quarter of the 62. Right? Does it be gamma after yes. displaced? Yeah. Volume. Yeah. Specific weight. This is V. But you got me a number? 15.6175. 15.6175 pounds. 
That's the weight of the water displaced. Agreed? And then how much is the weight of the object that we're putting in the water? 11. 11. Should it float? Yeah. yeah. That's it. That's how you calculate it. Okay. So let's do another one. Will it float or not? Probably not. I don't know. You probably would because it's not much dick inside of it. Companies are not going to go with that answer. Yeah, probably. No, this is for sure. Yeah, probably. All right. <laughs> uh, its diameter is 1.575. It's what? 1.575 in diameter. And it weighs? Just about that. Point one ounces. Well, that'd be well, it doesn't point show up on it doesn't show up on here. <laughs> See the diameter one more time, sorry. Point one ounce. Anybody got the diameter one again? Point five seven point five seven five. Point five seven five. That's inches. One inch. Point seven five seven five inches. Calipers measure in inches. Yep. Weight, point one ounce, diameter, five point seven five. There was another point five seven five. What was it? One point five seven. Oh my god, glitching. Pick up new bar. Yeah, no kidding. One point five seven five. I knew there was some sevens and fives. You just raised the dot, but the. One point in the front of the five. Then it's the whole thing in reality. I don't know what you're saying. You wrote five points in five, right? Sorry. Can you just raise the dot and put the one point uh, in front of the five first time? The first time? I'm just letting you know for future reference. I might have, but I might have, yeah. Is it going to float or not? I need numbers. Yeah. I need That's numbers. I need proof. Give me proof. How do you find the volume of a sphere? Four thirds. Uh, four thirds pi radius cubed. Four thirds pi radius cubed. Radius cubed. So you just take the diameter. Uh, yep. For the radius. I got the volume to be 2.0456. 2.0456 inches to the third? Yeah. All right. Everybody do it. Then we'll we'll check. Our volume? Oh. Not a different I So then we need weight of water displaced. That's going to be the volume times what? Yeah, volume times the specific weight. So inches to the third, specific weight in feet to the third. Can't just use those, got to switch. We need inches, we need feet to the third.
This is in pounds, right? 62.47 pounds per foot cube times volume. This gives us pounds. Uh, what did you get for the weight again? For that? I got, what was, it's down point one. Point zero. One. Point one zero ounces. 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 You're trying to get pounds? This is giving you pounds because the specific weight's in pounds. Right? So I got you can zero. get pounds or ounces, doesn't matter, but in the end, you have to compare. I got 0 0.07 pounds. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, confirmation. 0 0.0739. Pounds. But our weight of objects in ounces. So what is that? Divide by 16. Divide by 16. Point. Zero, zero, zero point zero, zero, six, two, yep. five. Yep, pounds. So this thing weighs point zero, zero, six pounds. And what is our displayed weight? And it then it should. Devin? Yeah. I'm saying I thought I was wishing your name already. That was hilarious. That's great. I was really rude. I was rooting for you, though. I was rooting for you. How did you miss the bucket? It's right. He didn't do too bad. It was right next to the bucket. How's it float? This is like right on top? It's. I would say it is a quarter submerged. Wow. More than I would thought. Yeah. Anybody need to see it? You can come see it. You're good. All right. Excellent. Good job. Thank you. You did great. No. Is, it, is it a ping pong ball or a table tennis? Is it going to close? Is that just a good one? You just got yeah, it's oh, yeah. Oh, or is it going to sing? That's going to sing. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Prove it to me. Oh boy. You have the num you have the formulas right there. I have to really ponder on this. The diameter is the orb. one point zero six seven. One point zero six seven. Inches. How much does it weigh? In diameter. And the weight in ounces, 4.05. Well, yeah, that is. So it's 4.05. It's displacing less um, water and weighs. Pounds or ounces? Ounces. What was the diameter? 1.067. Okay. Okay. So it's Diameter one point zero six seven. Jeez, and weight was four point. What did I say? Zero four point zero five ounces. Zero five. Ounces. This is float or no float. You know what's funny? You titled it as float or no. <laughs> so we need volume. Uh, is that inches cubed? Inches cubed. Okay, one more time, Jorge. Point zero uh, six three six zero five one. 
Yeah. Anyone confirm that? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Right. That's real. You guys are asking? Are you sure? Well, I did it once. Okay. 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 <laughs> they trust themselves more because it matches yours. Yep. I kicked it. A foot, my foot goes right where they strapped that thing. Man. You just stomp on it? Or... Yeah, I just kick it. Ah. So now we need weight of water displaced. So that is volume times specific weight. Does the volume need to be in square feet? Cubic feet. Cubic feet sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Because your specific weight is coming to you in cubic feet. Six. Five. You may have a weight of water displaced. Zero point two two <clears throat> zero point zero two two nine. Yeah. Zero two two nine pounds. nine four pounds. Yep. That's the water displaced. How much does our object weigh in pounds? Quarter, roughly. About 0.25 pounds again. So it weighs 0.25 and it displaces one tenth of <laughs> Devin. Throw it in the water. No, I'm not. Oh, I'm actually, I wanted to redeem myself. Well, you can try to shoot it in again, but. Oh, that feels kind of, kind of. Anybody want to? Do we want to put odds on it or anything? Oh, any, no. Anybody want to wager? Is it? You think it's going to sink? Huh? Wow. Didn't just sink. Jeez, went down like a went down like a submarine. Uh, submarine can still float. Just water. All nice right, like nice the, job. I think you you can you get it right. Yeah. Got to calculate volume and how much displaced. Yeah. Not really. That's pretty weightless. If it was something inside there that had weight, then when you weigh the object, you're going to capture all that. Okay. Right. So. And even whether it's hollow or not, that doesn't matter. <clears throat> I mean, this is hollow, right? It has air inside. But if it was some kind of like super light foam, it would still obviously float. It's all about weight. Even, even if it's like that, but it's made like that heavy metal, even if you can have air in the middle, it would, it would it might think. Yeah. Think all the way down. Yes. All right. So now back to the boat. I don't know. We determined this thing was going to float. Is that right? Because the displaced water was 15 and the weight was 11. Right? So then on your boat, you not only have to tell me if it's going to float or not, but you also have to tell me where the water line is if it floats. And you want it to float. And you don't want it to float like right near the top or any little wave is going to sink your boat. But you don't how we would do that? How how are we what? You don't want it to flow right near the top? You no, know, your boat would sink. Especially in your waves. And any little wave like, would take your boat out, down, right? Water. If it floated right near the top of your boat, that would not be a very fun boat to be in. Oh, you mean like the water level being like right next to the right next to the top? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you meant sitting if there was like very oh, no. much one that take Yeah. So on this one, how could we calculate? where the water line would be. Any ideas? Do like, um, 
water displays compared to the volume or something like that? Water You're getting close, yeah. Stuff. So what if what if I drew the water line all the way around, and then what can you tell me about this portion of the volume? So hard. No. It's like half of the volume. Well, you, not not necessarily half, but it's just not the whole volume, it's correct? It's going displace a specific amount of water. How way. much water? The weight of the, of, of the object. It's the weight much. of the object. So if this thing weighs 11 pounds, right? We want this water displacement area and volume down here to be 11 pounds. And then I would know, oh, my water line is right there, right? But I don't know where this is. Like, I don't know where it is, but I kind of want it in this region, right? So it becomes an unknown. The water depth becomes an unknown in an equation that I need to write which is the volume times the density equals weight. And if I say I want the weight to be 11 pounds, not 62.4, right? I want it to be 11, the, the, the object weight. Then the only unknown in there, because I know the specific weight of the fluid, it's water, right? And I know everything about the volume except for one dimension. The density. We know the density. That's water. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jorge. Working. Yeah. So, merchant uh, ships. Okay, because most of them are on full water, and the uh, yeah, the small density. Yeah. So the engineer has to calculate. Oh, no, you just use a different density. To, I don't really yeah. Have yeah. All right. So we know that it's. Volume times specific weight equals weight, right? So if you set this weight equal to the weight of your boat, 11 pounds, that means that this volume is going to displace the amount of the boat, right? The 11 pounds. So the volume is going to be like it was before, 12 times, yeah, I should write in the units, 12 inches times 6 inches times y. So that's the volume. This is a y. That's our y distance here. And then what's our specific weight? 62.47. I want my units in there, so I'm going to write it out longer. Where am I getting the 11 pounds? Weight of the box and then the weight that I'm carrying in the box, right? Okay, just clarifying. Specific weight, where am I getting that? Water. Yeah, so if your boat's going to float in salt water, it would be different. If it's floating in fresh water, it's different. If it's a float in an oil tank, it's different, right? So this is the fluid. And then this is actually my boat. I had to make some decisions. I said 12 by 6, but I don't know why, and I want to know why. All right, so we have a unit problem. We have inches, 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 and then we have feet cubed, so we have to deal with that. So I know that there's 12 inches cubed per foot cubed, right? And that gets rid of all of these inches, inch, inch, inch. Feet, feet go away and just left over, right? Mm -hmm. So what's my answer going to be in? Pounds. Yeah, I think I have too many here, don't I? If this is volume, it should be 
inches, let's say it's feet, sorry. It's feet to the third and a specific weight is in pounds per feet cubed. And this is pounds. Everything drops out, right? So we're just gonna be left over with our Y in inches. This has to be in inches or feet, either one. So if we convert it, this is feet, 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 and this is feet. So this is what we're solving for. It would be in feet in this case. So whatever unit you convert to is the unit you're gonna be left over. I got rid of all the inches, so now I'm gonna have feet here. So just be careful with your units. We maybe we could have went the other way and just got inches. You want the inches and feet? Then? Either way, you can do feet or inches. Just know what you're doing. Like if you're dividing by twelve to the third, then you're going to come up with feet, right? If you flip it and just leave the inches and and get rid of this, then that conversion would give you inches. So whichever way you want to do it doesn't matter. Got an answer. All right. How'd you get how'd you get the answer? We need Y, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, Algebra, uh, right? You divide, well, you convert the inches to feet. Yep. So yep. You have, uh, one times 0.5 in parentheses times y in parentheses times 62.47. Okay. You divide uh eleven pounds by 62.47. Yep. Okay. And that leaves your Y all by itself. Yeah. And then uh, 1 times 0.5 is 0.5. So you have 0.5 times Y equals 0 0.1761. Anyone else get that? Is that what you got? Uh, y times 0.5. Oh, so then what you do? So, okay. So the, the, tw the 12 inches is, is one foot times half a foot. So that's 0 0.5. Okay, if you're using this, you don't have to do all that, right? You just divide by the 12 to the third. Okay, so... But however you want to do it, I get what you're doing. All right, so 0 0.5 times y equals 0 0.1761, okay? Yep. You divide 0 0.1761, y equals 0 0.3522 feet or 4.226. 0 0.3522? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else get that for feet? Yeah, so then we just go times 12, because it would be nice to have it in inches. What's that? 4.226 inches. 4.226 inches. Boom. That's where she'll float. So if your box is six inches tall, you have a little bit of what's called water line or, or uh, above water line, right, in your box. But you could just calculate this, figure it out, and then design your boat to be two or three inches above or whatever. Just don't put your boat directly on the edge. It's just not a good thing. All right? So that's the first boat that you're going to design. You're going to build out of cardboard. Okay? You then are going to design a second boat in which you have to change the hull. So just think about, like, all right, your second boat, you're going to make into a half sphere. It's going to be kind of hard to build. I wouldn't recommend doing this. But if you were going to do that, calculating the waterline on a curved surface, you're going to have to go back to that equation that had the sphere, right? And you want to remember what that equation looked like? It was like four degrees. Yeah. Four degrees. Five degrees. Five degrees. Five degrees. Yeah, this thing, and you're going to have to solve for something. Yeah, it gets super complicated based on what you do to your home. So be careful on your second one. Before we build it, we need to calculate the hydrostatic force. Yeah, it works. So here's the deal today is all about calculating, trying to figure out the size of your first boat, that box where the water line is going to be, calculating it all out, and then designing your second boat, trying to figure out that water line, okay? Those calculations are due Wednesday. That's all. No build, 
None of the none of the rest. And just then, for the on just for the first boat. No, for both boats. Oh, for both boats. Okay. Yeah, for both boats. Okay. So you have to kind of figure out your second boat where you're going to change in the hull, and then go for that. Crash. It has to be a half sphere. Or no, no, no. Just it does not absolutely does not have to be half. Sphere. You can do anything you want to your shoe box. You just have to change the hull, the part that's under the water. Okay. I mean, obviously, the simplest thing would just to be make it a triangle. If you want to do something more creative, than that go for it. But yeah. Fucking tired. Yeah, that was good. What is this here? I'm trying to get through that. What's due Wednesday? Calculations. 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 For both boats. Calculations. Calculations for both boats due Wednesday. Then Wednesday, you build. Okay. Fun. Are we trying to accomplish anything specific with the second boat? Do we want it to like sit higher? You want it to be cool. Okay. Cooler than anyone else's. It doesn't have to sit higher or lower. You just got to identify the water line by marking it on the hull. So we will build on Wednesday. Okay. Are we going to get so graded on? We have to bring the boxes. You're going to definitely get graded on coolness. No, I have the cardboard. I'm going to borrow one. I know exactly what to do now. <laughs> so cardboard and duct tape. And I'm going to get you your object that you're going to float. Because you're going to need to know what you're going to float, right? And the yeah. Lines. All right, and flights. The plane paint job. Forget the flights. Yeah. Like hot rod that we got a spot. Yo, yo, yo. Right. Yo, we have a stack of this. I wouldn't have taken you for a yellow one. A stack of this. Wouldn't have taken you for a yellow one. All right. This is not even one. You want the navy blue guy? If you can describe this with a knife, you can bend it and then tape those seams. It'll float long enough for us to test it. It's long enough float across. But long enough. That's right here. That's the material we're going to work with. Oh my God. This, this is what you're going to float. Oh, 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 uh, How much is that? Huh? How much is that? That's my job. All right. Oh, All right. Oh, All right. Oh, I don't know. Put it to the scale. Put it to the scale. Put it to the scale. Extra credit if you float two of them. Six point seven five pounds. Oh, here. Six point seven five. Seven five. Six point seven. Six point seven five pounds is what I hear on the weight. Did you verify it's in pounds? It is. Yeah, it's in pounds. Just verify it. <laughs> so we're going to test if that break floats with the rectangular boat as well. Yeah, we're going to build both boats. Yeah, you have a bunch of boat building going on. What's what's due Wednesday is so we're going to we're gonna just build Wednesday. So we're going to build a box. Yeah. Build whatever else Wait. we have in mind. So you got to be ready to build Wednesday. So each of us are individually building our own box. Damn straight. Sounds fun. I know exactly what you build. Yeah. So you're going to build them. And then you're going to clearly mark the water line on the outside before you test it from hiding the bricks so you can't get to them. Okay? Does that make sense? You're going to yeah. design it, build it. The box will go pretty quick. The, the second one might be trickier. Yeah. Yeah, kind of, because I'm just going to bring in a big bin. So I'll give you that dimension. And then we'll put water in the bin and then we'll float it. Okay. Uh, I don't think there's water in the pond, or I'd say we just go up and float them in the pond, but I'll check that and I'll let you know. Wait, that means that we're going to go on the field trip? We might. I mean, we could go to the, the college pond with our boats. I have access to the least. But it's hard to get to the water at the college pond because of the bank is all. Yeah, I don't know if my mom's going to find it. The swimming pool, they probably wouldn't let us float our bricks. And then who's going to get the brick when it goes to a father? I know you guys have a chance. Kevin, Kevin is going to get the brick. Okay. Just volunteer. Kevin. It's perfect, man. Uh, lab four. Yeah. This is just boat lab. I call it just boat lab. Four, yeah. Yeah. I'm more interested in just keeping track of weeks. So week three, boat lab. Do I have a tape measure? There's a whole bunch in the back. There's one boat. For but I don't have one. Any homework? Oh, right here. Very oh. No homework. You'll have some on Wednesday, though. So if you want to work ahead, you can see Wednesdays.